Hi guys, welcome to another episode of That Gardener channel. Uh, this is a quick video on the March update on our garden. It's a end of summer video. Um, our summer is going to be ending in about two weeks. So we are in the southern hemisphere in Africa, Kenya. Um, and we are going to be going into the rain season. So I thought I would be showing an update on uh, what we have growing in our garden and what didn't survive also the dry season, the drought itself. I'm trying to shoot this on the iPhone. It's a gift that I got from my dad um, for my birthday um, and in December. So I thought it would be interesting project to try to shoot it on this and edit and see how it goes. Hopefully it's not too ugly and you guys enjoy the video. So let's get going. So this is our vegetable bed, if you guys remember from our previous videos. A um, couple of things have definitely changed in terms of the vegetables that we have growing um, and few things that didn't survive the drought. Uh, one thing to note is, of course, a lot of the lettuce and spinach you won't see here anymore because we have um, consumed most of it and some of it didn't survive, uh, started to seed by end of the drought, the dry season. So what we are doing is, again, we are planting a couple of seedlings. Uh, these are our spinach. Then we have also some of the lettuce and also some of the bok choy um, that we have put into the ground. And we're trying to time it with the rain coming um, in about 10 days, two weeks. So hopefully that should work out nicely. Uh, we have also some coriander growing. A lot of that has gone to seed. As you can see, they started to flower and bolted. Uh, because of the real hot season here uh, but we're hoping that we can plant few more and try to make it work with the coriander because we use it quite a lot um, we do have also the kamangi this is a new plant that we have growing and we didn't have it in previous videos um, it's a very very fragrant plant from Indonesia it smells so good it's a lemon basil mix uh, smell it's exceptionally fragrant plant that we absolutely love using in our Indonesian cooking so my wife had requested um, that we put in a couple of kamangi seeds as well um, and then we have of course our lemongrass which we had um, which we have always had a couple of years they're doing quite well I try to maintain um, a lot of water for them through irrigation during the dry season so they're doing quite fine we've been using it regularly in the center of the garden we have the eggplants growing we have two varieties of them growing we have the long purple and the black beauty variety um, it's flowered quite a bit as you can see and started to fruit um, and we have really enjoyed these eggplants um, last season was the first time i grew eggplants um, but it's been so well, we have been so lucky with growing them that we will now constantly grow them as well. well then we have a sunflower. We have a couple of sunflowers um, throughout the garden and we try to make sure that we interplant those flowers like marigold as well as well as sunflower um, throughout our vegetable garden to avoid the pests and to attract the bees and to make it really a polyculture environment within our bed. Um, then of course we have the tomato section and we have a bunch of tomatoes growing now. These are our indeterminate um, tomatoes with the cherry tomatoes growing. We have a bunch of them coming out now, which is nice. Um, hopefully we'll get them quite soon uh, for harvesting. Then we have a couple of other tomatoes here. This is a different variety of tomatoes, um, but also similar to cherry, um, also indeterminate variety. And then we have also the determinant variety of tomatoes growing here. Um, this is the beefsteak tomatoes um, starting to flower as well, which we are quite excited about and a couple of fruits coming out as well. So this is our tomato section. Then we have the cassava in the corner um, doing really well. This is actually one of our newer cassava growing because we have already harvested um, the cassava that we had growing for three years. Um, that was really, really tasty as well. Then we have the kangkung, which is like uh, the Indonesian watercress. It tastes so good. We constantly harvest it and it grows really fast. So this entire section is kangkung. Uh, you can see the beautiful flowers also coming out from kangkung and that's also because of the heat. Um, we are trying to again maintain the water level 
because we did have a shortage of water last few weeks so we are very careful with uh, water use but making sure that not all of them go to seed as well um, then we of course have our one of, one of our favorite plants here the parsley it grows like wildfire all over our garden so we use it quite a bit as well um, then another big mammoth sunflower growing here if you remember from one of the older videos variety of that mammoth uh, sunflower then we have a bunch of cassava here in the corner with a bit of ginger turmeric um, so here's a ginger there's some turmeric that's growing over here then again back to the Cancun um, one sunflower growing over there and again a bit of turmeric here and we also have peas um, if you remember from the previous video we always grow the peas here on the fence of our vegetable garden um, and that's to make sure that they can use the boundary of the garden then we have the pepper section here we have a couple of capsicum growing here as well as chilies um, different types of chilies we have the bullet chili then we also have the um, indonesian indian long thin chilies the red chilies i forgot to mention we also have the curry tree here and we also have the moringa um, that's been growing it it didn't do very well during the dry season but we're hoping it will come back we have the onions growing we have the shallots you can see the shallots have started to flower they have really beautiful flowers we absolutely love growing them even if it's just for the bees and not really for big harvest still beautiful and then next to the onion we have a bunch of ginger so this is our ginger section we have a ton of ginger growing and you can see one of them has started to dry which means that it's ready for harvest that's an indication um, and then we have the broccoli growing here which we're really excited about it's been doing really well we have been actually harvesting their leaves quite regularly and using it for cooking it's so delicious you have to try that if you haven't um, next to the broccoli we have the strawberries growing this is the first season we're trying out our strawberries um, you can see they started to flower and we have a couple of fruits coming out as well um, if you do have any tips on strawberry growing please put it in the comment section i would love to learn from you guys um, any tips on growing strawberries and then we have a bunch of um, uh, lettuce as well as some of the um, shallots the new succession shallots that we have put in because we know that the shallots that started to flower are ready for harvest soon uh, so we wanted to make sure we had constant harvest for that as well um, then going into the fence uh, we have the fence of the garden here and we try to grow maximize the use i would say that this is probably uh, one of our successes for the year we actually managed to grow something on the fence because in the past few years we have struggled quite a lot um, except the, maybe the chilies that have grown for the last three years here um, we haven't managed to grow much on this fence and that's because of the very poor soil um, that we have on the fence and it also gets cold not enough sunlight um, but we were lucky we worked on it quite a lot last few years putting in a lot of compost uh, making sure that we put proper irrigation um, and also amending the soil as much as we could so we do have a lot of Cancun growing here the watercress then we have the cassava the chilies uh, we have a, a corn growing here as well if you remember we are not experts on corn um, but we have been trying to improve on that so we experiment with corn in the section um, again a lot of watercress Cancun a uh, bunch of cassava that always does well then we have pumpkin that does really really well it's the first crop that i had grown on our garden um, that we have enjoyed we have always had good harvest from pumpkin um, and then of course a little bit more of the cassava there's a huge cassava tree here that we're excited to harvest um, and then again some more corn that we're experimenting with uh, hopefully this year we have better luck with the corn because last year was a bit of a failure <laughs> so we have a bit of um, succulents in this section we have some snake plants um, and uh, this is our compost pile here we recently did actually a uh, let's say a harvest of our compost or an extract of our compost pile we had about a, a good 30 to 40 kilos of 
um, compost that we had spread around our garden so this is fairly new compost it's about um, two to three weeks old um, you can see that we have done quite a lot of work in, in mixing it up with the dry and, and the browns and the greens and a um, lot of the kitchen ways cardboards um, etc and then on the left side what we do is we um, try to maintain a good source of nitrogen and carbon uh, that we keep adding to the pile so these are our leaves on the left side that are freshly cut from the garden we try to dry them out and then add to the compost um, either as a carbon or we try to add it fresh as nitrogen um, then we have a bunch of uh, wood pile wood waste that we collect from the garden um, as we are trimming the bushes etc we use it for firewood um, and then obviously use the ash in our garden for fertilizer so that's really it for this section of the garden uh, if you guys remember we have a very small section here that we grow something <laughs> we try to grow something here um, so this time we just have a cassava in this block with a bit of the lettuce that's doing really really well and then we have the mango trees here they haven't yet um, flowered it's not the season for them to flower unfortunately last year we didn't have any harvest from these two mango trees but uh, these are the dwarf mango tree variety by the way but we hope that uh, we manage to get a bit of harvest um, going into next year because i think this year it's been too late now in terms of the flowering here's our lime tree that we have on our property um, that we have been harvesting quite heavily on the leaves but it's been a constant struggle for us because these ants have constantly attacked our tree as you can see in the shots i hope that shows um, it's been a real struggle for us really um, we have tried everything from baking soda to um, combination of chili water milk water um, anything organic in terms of fighting these um, ants on our tree but uh, nothing has really worked uh, regularly so it works for maybe two weeks three weeks and then again they're back um, but if you have any tips please do let me know um, I know everyone recommended also neem oil but we cannot find neem oil in this country so we are very limited on our sources as well um, but anything you could recommend in terms of organic um, pesticide for these ants it would be great uh, next to that we have our local tree this is a native tree that we have kept as it is uh, we try to preserve this tree and below that i've made a, a small bed with a bunch of different variety of plants we have some sunflower we have a little bit of the kamangi we have marigolds and then we have a corn growing as well so very good mix of plants um, just to diversify our um, bed here and what you see on the ground here is guava so that means i have a huge guava tree as well um, this guava tree is absolutely amazing we get so much harvest that we are not even able to eat it um, so the birds do our work the worms do our work um, the squirrels on the ground they and the bees they all love this guava um, tree so we, we kept it as it is and we have tried to manage um, the cleanup of these guavas that keep falling on the floor <laughs> uh, climber flowers that have really taken over all over the tree it looks absolutely beautiful because you can see the flowers all over the tree um, going everywhere and it's that, uh, in this uh, beneficial relation between the two the flower is actually attracting a lot of the birds and the bees um, that is good for the guava for being pollinated as well when they're flowering um, so they really have a very good relationship and really accidental i would say i was just trying to do a little bit of an experiment to see if i could use this guava tree as a um, climber post for my flowers and uh, now they have really exceptionally done well they have climbed all over it and here we have the monstera which is really beautiful we have always had this monstera for several years um, the birds absolutely love it as well we get good shade under our swing with this monstera um, we in this fence what we have tried to do is also grow a bunch of uh, different plants with varying success we had some peas um, a little bit of the ginger and mostly peas here a little bit of also turmeric and a little bit of the watercress kangkung 
um, definitely varied success I would say um, some failures some have dried out I tried to grow some coriander in the section it dried out basil died out um, so it's it's a very difficult section of our garden to grow but we keep trying to experiment and I'm trying out the peas this time because they don't need too much of sunlight so let's see how they do um, and in this small section um, small garden bed that we made we have put in a bit of variety as well we have some parsley we have a little bit of chilies and turmeric and marigold as well as spinach growing um, also a bit of varied i would say success because the soil is extremely bad in this section but we have been doing a lot of amendments um, and i think in the last two years it has improved substantially so we get a bit of harvest here um, so now walking over to our ornamental section if you remember we have the vegetation in the back section and the guava tree is kind of like our border uh, with the pineapple plant and then on this section in the front we have the ornamentals um, we have the roses growing we have some of the elephant ear um, this is one of our favorite roses because it's really beautiful color with the red and the yellow um, we have the coxcomb this is one of our newer flowers that we added in this season uh, quite beautiful as well and i wasn't familiar with this before i found it in the nursery we have the marigold um, sunflower we have also some succulents here we have the prickly pear here which has become enormous now um, we have few other succulents here we have some more roses a um, bunch of different roses and we have done some cuttings as well as you can see uh, for the roses that we are going to try to propagate more roses some elephant ears bunch of more roses here some local flowers some zinnias some petunias as well then we have the marigold and then we have the section of the sunflower and then we have the section of the hydrangeas here um, here we have done severe cuttings on the hydrangeas because we had severe drought here hydrangeas absolutely love water as you guys know um, so we're trying to see how we can make them survive through the dry season for next few days um, and then we have some more local flowers here and uh, that's carl <laughs> always walking around with me we have some roses here and uh, our lavender bush this is our french lavender bush that we have um, some more roses here a bunch of more roses this is our entire rose section um, there's a banana tree here and then of course the monstera on this corner as well another monstera baby that came out of mama here uh, and then on this section we another flower bed uh, garden bed that we created uh, because the soil was really poor on this section as well we have a huge banana tree growing this has done really well so it's about two years old and we're hoping to get some fruits from this one because it's growing really well below the banana tree we try to do a variety of uh, plants as well we have the cassava some local flowers um, and then a bunch of peppers and as well then in this section this is our mixed succulent section you can see all types of succulents in this corner and on this side of this flower bed we have a bunch of different roses and local flowers growing um, and then walking into the last part of the garden next to the entrance to our house we have of course a geranium this is the one of the first potted plants that i bought four years ago that has always done well then we have a bunch of uh, other plants here like the desert rose i never managed to get this plant to flower in the last three years that's a big fail for me i would love to learn if you have any um, tips on the desert rose how to get it to flower but i've tried everything i've tried to deprive it of water i've tried to put it in less sunshine more sunshine but nothing has worked yet <laughs> but i would love to hear if you have any tips on that uh, some more succulents this is the napoleon hat plant absolutely beautiful uh, with the waxy leaves i love this plant then we have um, a bit of fern here and in the corner of course we have the pothos that's growing really really well as always 
and we have also the jasmine that we had added in that's doing really well and hopefully it will start to flower um, this year we have some mint pineapple there in the corner then of course we have a little bit more of the jasmine in this section of the garden we actually recreated the floor here so we had a sort, sort of a raised bed um, because the floor was absolutely <laughs> terrible for growing any vegetables um, it was just cement so we did a raised bed and it's been done over the years through a lot of the leaves and a lot of the mulch and some compost that we added and that's where we have grown all these roses and peppers of course we have a little bit more of the jasmine here that's growing cassava some chilies a uh, huge rose. rose this is the rose on our property that has the best smell um dark red maroon color rose then we have more jasmine and this is our famous famous herb bed <laughs> that we use quite a lot we have the basil and the mint uh, growing really well we did have some coriander growing here before but it didn't survive the dry season again it died off but um, the basil and the mint are doing quite well this is the section where we store our, our tools we have very few tools uh, you can check out our tools video for the ones that we use mm, just the basic fork and then the watering can and some of the um, other tools like the hand travel etc but very few things we have the hose as well um, not the broom <laughs> so very few tools this is where we store it and that's really it guys that's our tour for today um, I hope it wasn't too long sorry about that we try to cover all our plants in our house and give you a little bit of an update what we have growing some of our failures as well and if you have any tips I would love to really hear from you um, especially on some of the plants that we are growing and what we could do better as well uh, we are constantly trying to learn from you any tips you have any videos that you post i always tend to watch them and learn from them and read um, blog posts online as well um, and uh, i guess for this year what we're going to really try to focus on is do better with our flowers we have planted um, quite a different variety of flowers on our garden bed and we are trying to also learn how we can do better with our uh, vegetables as well the new vegetables that we're planning to grow this year um, so any tips would be great and uh, i'm glad that you joined us for our video today and hopefully you'll be able to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video see you guys next time bye